We are looking at China this morning. House Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer joined me yesterday on Sunday Morning Futures to discuss the Biden administration and why it ended the China initiative. Comer wondering if, in fact, this is one of the decisions that Joe Biden made that he was actually paid for personally. Watch this. This is one of the worst decisions with respect to national security that Joe Biden made as president. The amount of money that China has sent Biden and Biden family uh, entities has, has apparently impacted many decisions that, that this administration has made that were adversarial to every American. Our national security is at risk because of bad policy decisions that Joe Biden made that put China first and America last. Joining me right now, the Gatestone Institute senior fellow and author of The Coming Collapse of China and the Great U.S.-China Tech War. Gordon Chang is with us once again. Gordon, this is all so extraordinary. Uh, the fact that these uh, decisions that the president has made are now being questioned. Your thoughts on the China initiative and uh, the effectiveness of it. And then, of course, when Joe Biden walked into the White House, he canceled it. Yeah, the most uh, the most serious national security threat to the United States, of course, is China. So why the FBI would end their China initiative is just perplexing. Got to remember that we still have six Chinese police stations on our sovereign American territory. I mean, two in California, one in New York, and one each in Texas, Minnesota, and Nebraska. And, you know, we didn't learn about this from the FBI. We learned about this from the Spanish-based NGOs, Safeguard Defenders, as well as the New York Post. This is just amazing. You know, Maria, um, in the middle of March, a spokesperson for Hunter Biden's legal team said that the Chinese state company, state company, paid the Biden family, you know, more than a million dollars as, quote, um, good faith seed funds. Well, that's an admission of corruption because corruption is the only explanation why a Chinese company in a commercial setting would pay money in that way. It's just extraordinary when you think about all of the money that the Biden family has taken in. This is the president of the United States. How are we expected to uh, believe that he's going to be making decisions on behalf of America uh, relative to our number one adversary after having taken $10 million in, at least, from these uh, state-owned companies? Yeah, the big test will be whether the president will issue that long-expected executive order prohibiting investment into China's tech sector. Um, those rules have been long delayed, um, and the question is whether they'll be watered down or not. So everyone's going to be looking at that because that's critical. And, you know, yeah. if Biden doesn't want to defend the United States, then he just shouldn't be president. Well, it's just very scary knowing that the China initiative was canceled, and we have to wonder why. What do you think is going on at these police stations, Gordon? I mean, look, we know that there's all this surveillance underway. They had a, you know, balloon traveling throughout the country. Uh, the Chinese Communist Party did, and Biden allowed it for much of a week. Uh, what do you think is going on in terms of surveillance with regard to these police stations? The most important thing Beijing is doing with those are surveilling um, people who are legally on American soil. And, of course, the operation Fox Hunt and Skynet, those are to return to China people that Beijing wants. So these police stations have been involved in that. And we know that. We don't have to speculate it, because there is Chinese propaganda that is boasted that the now-closed uh, New York station, um, the one in Chinatown, uh, there's still one more in New York, by the way, but the one that was closed was actually involved in um, bringing back to China uh, people that uh, were considered fugitives. So right now, we uh, have to look at this and say, you know, the FBI is not doing anything about it because those six locations are still operating. Extraordinary. Where is the other one in New York? Um, I don't know. It has not been disclosed. Um, oh. But there is that one in New York, one in San Francisco, one in L.A., one in Houston, and then two others in undisclosed locations in Minnesota and in Nebraska.
just extraordinary, Gordon. China's foreign exchange reserves, meanwhile, higher than expected last month, uh, $3.2 trillion. The uh, Chinese yuan down over six-tenths of a percent against the dollar in the month of April. But the dollar fell nearly 1 percent against other major currencies, Gordon. And I want to get your take on the CCP's efforts to replace the dollar as the uh, reserve currency globally. Do you think they're going to have a serious impact here? Um, actually, I think the only country that can dethrone the dollar is the United States. And we can do that uh, with wild spending and inflation, which mm. means Biden's doing a very good job of it. But China's yeah. conver currency is not convertible. And for other reasons, Beijing can't make that much progress. But Biden actually is opening the door, for instance, that Brazil agreement um, with regard to the use of the real and the renminbi. That would never have occurred but for Biden's actions to elect uh, Lula da Silva. So this is self-wounding. And, you know, and with regard to the increase in the foreign exchange reserves, you know, Beijing um, has been reporting really crazy numbers that don't make sense, including um, Q1 GDP numbers. So I don't know if that number is real um, in terms of the foreign exchange reserves. It doesn't make sense. Well, it's amazing to me that the corporate sector does not get the national security issues at all as it relates to China, Gordon. What are your thoughts on corporate America? Berkshire Hathaway's vice chairman, Charlie Munger, urged the United States and China to settle differences. Uh, he slammed the tensions at the company's annual shareholders meeting this weekend. Watch this. There's been some tension in the economic relationship of the United States and China. I think that that tension has been wrongly created on both sides. I think we're equally guilty of being stupid. If there's one thing we should do, it's get along with China. And we should have a lot of free trade with China. Everything that increases the tension between the two companies is stupid, stupid, stupid. Gordon, is he living under a rock or what? He says we should be uh, friends with China as if China has not been having all of these provocations. Yeah, uh, Charlie Munger's comments um, are stupid, stupid, stupid. Um, I'm really concerned because Charlie Munger is basically uh, asking uh, the United States not to defend itself. China kills tens of thousands of Americans each year with fentanyl. And I think Munger feels, well, we really shouldn't care about that because I want to make money. Um, so if it were just stupidity on Munger's part, I'd feel a lot better. But I do feel um, a whiff of um, treason. I'll tell you, that is just disgusting, Gordon. Thank you so much for joining us, Gordon. Thank you. Uh, it's right spot on on the national security issues, as always. Gordon Chang joining us this morning. Thank you, sir.